Hello, hello, everybody. Oh, my goodness. Welcome to the Real Juicy Detox. How is everybody doing today? I hope you're all having a great day. It is December the 23rd. Yes, it is. It is the day before Christmas Eve, uh, depending on where you live. If you happen to live in Sweden, like one of my beautiful clients and Louise, it is Christmas Eve right now. So Merry Christmas. Welcome. Oh, excuse me. I am Burns. I'm your certified detox specialist. Oh, are we having fun yet? Are we having fun? Is this on? Hello, hello. Tap, tap. Can you hear me? Testing, testing. Alana is here. Hi, I'm early again. Hello, all. Oh my gosh, Alana. I love you. How are you doing? How are you doing? Burns, did you make a pudding that tastes like tapioca? Yes, I did. Actually, that was the chia pudding that we made. Um, maybe I maybe I should make some chia pudding. I am feeling in the mood in need of some comfort food. How about you guys? I don't know. Is it just the Christmas season that's doing that? I think it might be. So welcome. If you've if you're brand new, welcome. You're in the right spot. First of all, know that for sure. I am in my juicy detox kitchen and I want to take another stab at those raw vegan wraps that I attempted to make yesterday. I got to tell you, they came out really, really good. I have them right here. I'm going to show them to you. And I have some leftovers of the pies that I use the dough to make like handheld pies. They came out great in terms of texture, but I wasn't crazy about the flavor. Wasn't crazy about the flavor, but the texture, the technique, all spot on, all on point. And I'm like, I have to admit, I'm feeling a little bit frustrated with myself because I'm really, really good at making wraps. Like I make a wicked, wicked wrap. I've done them for, you know, the hundred days that I did um, raw vegan eating after the juicing cleanse. My wraps was like, my wraps were on freaking point. I can make a wrap in my sleep, making it out of anything in the fridge. And then, I don't know, I lost my stride. So we are figuring it back out again. What I do love about what I'm doing with the wraps is that they are, um, uh, they're easy to do once you figure out the texture. It's sometimes the flavor of some of the ingredients that you might use that might throw it off a little bit. So I want to really work on perfecting that and to show you guys that not every recipe Kurt, turns out great, but when you perfect it and when you can stop and really analyze what you're doing in the recipe and how all of that may be affecting the outcome of the final product, understanding how to break it down and, and kind of problem solve where you went wrong, kind of deconstructing the, the success process. Um, that is really the most important skill I can teach you more so than the recipe. Well, but, but what's the recipe? What recipe did it, did you use? Pretty much the same recipe that I used before. And if it made it to a recipe card in my procreate app, then it was successful in that moment. But like all things, uh, it's not always a linear straight line to success, right? Sometimes things are going to turn out like you don't expect them to, or want them to, but that doesn't mean that you're failing. That just means that that recipe or that process just needed a little bit of tweaking. You know what I'm saying? So we are all shared up. I sh always share this in some juicing communities that I love. I met a lot of you it, through these different communities. So uh, I always share it back to those communities because I like sharing the love. I like sharing the love. You know what I'm saying? So tapioca pudding that tastes uh, pudding that tastes like tapioca is just the chia seed pudding. So uh, we might make a little bit of that before we get started. I might just want to jump into quickly making these wraps and getting the heck out of here. I don't know. Might be here for six hours. Who knows? We don't know. We'll see how it goes. All right. Um, hey, babe. Hey, babe. Right back to you, Jen. What's happening? Am I early or am I late? You're right on time. I was a little bit late coming in. Um, uh, because that's how it goes sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Hello, Kristen. Kristen is in the house. Oh my God. So many of you guys are here today. Yo, ho, ho. Yo, yo, yo. Ho, ho, ho. Who are you calling a ho? Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> I'm kidding. Hey, Cheryl. How you doing? How you doing? Good to see that you're here. 
Love you doing a lot of running around today, getting pizza for Eric and going to go going to do an apple and pineapple haul. Yes, girl. Alana, I'm so freaking proud of you. I can't even begin to tell you you're rocking this program in the middle of the Christmas season. All of you, all of you rocking this beautiful live food protocol in the middle of holiday season when it's so easy to get tempted into that comfort food of the holidays, but you're making your own raw vegan comfort food of your holidays. Rock on with your bad self. You're amazing. I wonder if it was the white onions. I am certain that it was the white onions. Positive. And the carrots may have been a bit bitter as well. So that's how it goes. Good afternoon, beautiful Carlene. Just leaving work. We'll catch you later. All right, babe. Are you off early from work? Dolly came home um, about half an hour ago. I'm like, oh, you're home. Right. I forget, right? Out in the out in the world. <laughs> It's Christmas. It's the day before Christmas Eve. People are leaving work early. Nope. I'm sicker than sick today. Oh, I'm so sorry. I had all raw yesterday and woke up throwing up an awful anxiety in the middle of the night. I haven't had anything today. Nothing. I may have some grape juice. Well, just know that that's your detox, babe. That's all the bread that you've been eating in the last week and all of the, um, you know, those forbidden foods that you're eating. I hate to say it. That's what it is. That's your body detoxing. So buckle up, baby. It's going to be a bumpy ride, <laughs> but you'll be fine. You'll come out of that healing crisis. <laughs> Jennifer, Barbara in the house burns. You're always right on time when you start your YouTubes. That's right. And you're always right on time when you get here. Absolutely. This notion that we're late and that we're like, ah, I got to get out of that. You guys know that if I have a scheduled time coming up on the YouTube channel and you can see it, it it's set up, that I'm going to be live. And you know that if you don't see one, I'm not going to be live. And you know where to go for the burns fix that you're looking for. Check out the playlist. You guys are right there for you on YouTube. You know how this goes. You guys are awesome. You're on the ball, my friends. Yes, wouldn't want it any other way. Yes, indeed. Hi, Amy. How are you? How are you? Uh, Kristen, I find our Ivar down at a store next to Bed and Bath, next to Bed Bath and Beyond. They have lots of different brands. I just saw it posted on a Naples foodie group. Awesome. I love that you guys are connecting. Kelly and Kristen, you guys should get together. You guys should get together. Kelly, I've had crazy anxiety the last 24 hours. My stomach is a wreck. I'm with you, babe. Oh, gosh, Amy, I'm so sorry, honey. We are all feeling the energy. The energies are shifting. Um, I was feeling the feels today. I was like, oh, my God, I don't know, man. Am I going to be having to cancel class today? You know, my tummy was off. I don't think it was anxiety. <sighs> I don't think it was anxiety. I think it was just this detox, you guys. Where's my juice? Let me go get my juice. One second. I pressed some delicious um, grapefruit juice this morning. Oh, my God. But as soon as I take a sip, yep, I feel it instantly in my in my tummy. So we don't know how long this class is going to go on for today. But what I do want to show you, what I, I do need to get something in that freaking dehydrator. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to do a couple of things right now. I'm going to first show you all the... Um, uh, the wraps that we made yesterday here in class. I'm really happy with how they turned out in terms of the texture, the pliability, and how they worked in a pie, a handheld pie. And I'm also going to do another type of wrap. I'm, I can do a couple different things, okay? So let me just show you some stuff here first. Wait. Hey, everybody, Christmas is almost here. Yes, Christmas is almost here. Are the kids excited, Ashlyn? Hey, Sherry. Oh, my God. I'm so glad that you are here. Uh, Sherry reached out to me yesterday or last night uh, or this morning sometime. <laughs> what is time anyhow? And um, 
uh, she wanted to, to know if what we're doing here could help her beautiful daughter with some health conditions. And I said, oh, heck yeah, absolutely. So welcome to you. What is your daughter's name again, Sherry? Um, so what I wanna show you guys here is, let me quickly show you this. So these are the wraps. And if you're following me on Instagram and Facebook stories, that is amazing because I showed these coming out of the dehydrator. Uh, gosh, what time was that? That was like midnight, midnight last night, right? And I showed you guys these. Dali and I did a taste test. He didn't mind them. They were all right. They were. He thought they were good. And me, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but I made them into these wraps, and I I used my my little wrap thingy, my little pie thingy. And actually, I wonder if you could, if you could put those in and press it down now that the dough is kind of already cooked. No, it's not gonna stick like that. But what I did was, after I pressed these flat on the tortilla press, then I put them into here on the saran wrap, fill them up, sorry, fill them up with the meat filling, which was raw vegan, um, and then pressed it together here. And that gave us these pies. And I showed you those on the stories last night. Dali and I were munching on those at midnight. And you know what? It's really cool to see that the dough can actually work into a pie situation, all right? Because um, it makes it fun to eat, <laughs> I'm just saying. Mm. It really does taste like a meat pie. And I just think it was maybe the carrots were a little bit, they weren't sweet enough. They were, you know, sometimes how carrots can be a little bitter when they get a little bit older or harder. So maybe I just need to use different carrots and definitely the onions are throwing it off. But the texture is perfect. And look at these wraps. They're perfect for filling up and rolling. Uh, you can you, you can do it as a as a taco you know, or as a sandwich like that, you can put two together and you can smear down some, some hummus on that and make like a quesadilla. You know what I'm saying? A variety of things that you can do. So this kind of food is so versatile and it is so good when we are trying to come up with ways to fill our bellies with delicious food that doesn't feel like we're on some kind of crazy diet because we're not. We're on a beautiful raw lifestyle and this is all raw. These flatbreads are all raw. You would pay probably one, two, three, four, five wraps like this. You can pay up to $12, $15 in some places for this quality of uh, raw wrap. And here we are in the Real Juicy Detox Kitchen learning how to do it for ourselves and, and, and healing ourselves. Hello, Elizabeth. Welcome. Are you watching as well, Elizabeth? I'm so glad that you are here. Everything that we talk about here at The Real Juicy Detox is so that you can avoid, <laughs> we, so that we can all avoid going down the medical road. You know what I'm saying? So whenever we have anything that is happening in our body, it's really, really important and, and, and necessary for us to understand why we are experiencing those things. And what we know now is that we are experiencing the pain that we feel in our body the dis-ease, the diagnoses, all of that is happening just because our body is not able to process and handle all of the acid forming food that we've been putting into it unknowingly to us, unknowingly to our parents, right? So now we are tasked with the job of cleaning things up, getting the body healed by removing the cause of what caused the dis-ease, the, the faulty body system, the degenerative uh, and damaged tissue in the first place, you can heal everything and regenerate everything in your body. So that is really good news, isn't it? I'm really glad that you are here. You're 19 years old. My daughter Kaya is 18. She pops into the live streams all the time. She was here yesterday showing us her crystals um, that she had just bought. So stick around, Elizabeth. I hope that you have fun ask your questions. If you have questions that you want me to address more 
directly, ask them right here in the class because I answer all of your questions. And not only is that going to help you get your answer, but that is going to help other people who might have a very similar question or problem or concern that's going to help them as well. So I always encourage you guys to ask questions. Don't feel embarrassed. Don't feel shy. You know, nobody here knows you from a hole in the ground. Anyhow, what do you got to lose? Right. Of course, hopefully if you stick around, which I hope that you will, you will be a loved and valued member of our classroom as well. And then we will know you and, but not from the place of, oh my God, did she just say that? Oh my God, did she just ask that question? No, it's from the place of, oh wow, let's give some love to Elizabeth. Let's give some love to Sherry. Let's give some love to each other. That's what we're about here. That's what we are about. Kelly said, Kel, uh, Amy said, Kelly, I've had crazy anxiety. The, yeah, you. I read that one. Yeah, so you got to remember too, we have to be gentle with ourselves at this time of year. It's a very emotional time of year. And sometimes we have stuff going on, trauma, emotional stuff going on that we don't even realize. And a lot of it could be tied to, you know, the anxiety around the holidays, performance anxiety, you know, wanting to make sure that everything is just right you know, we got to let go of that. We got to let go of that and remind ourselves that what this season is really about is enjoying each other. And even if that means that some people that we want to enjoy from our family are on the other side, you know, um, it's hard dealing with, eh, life is hard. Life can get really tricky. Ah, so we focus on ourselves. We focus on continuing to be the light that this world so much needs, especially this year. Uh, we focus on being the light that we came here to be in the middle of all of the, you know, anxiety producing stuff that's going on. So I'm just smelling my, my sprouts. These are buckwheat groats. Let me show this to you. I'm going to go through the questions some more, as you all know. So thank you so much for being here. This is our deliciousness cam. So these are buckwheat seeds or buckwheat groats. And I had them soaking. You can see their little tails starting there. I had them soaking for, oh gosh, I think this is the full one day later. So I soaked them for about four hours. Then I rinsed it out really, really well and then left it in the colander like this with, without soaking it in water. And then I've been rinsing this every, well, about every six hours. I go by the, walk by the sink. I rinse it out really well, let it, let it strain out. And what I thought I would do, because I, I really, I need to make a wrap. I need to come up with a wrap like I came up with the Bernsey burger. I need to come up with the quintessential wrap that you're going to want to go to that is going to be as close to the experience of bread as you can get it. You know, that's what I'm about. Because sometimes you just want a bread that tastes like a bread that doesn't taste like a vegetable made into a bread. So I'm going to do some experimenting with this live again on camera with you here. Yes, that is what I do. That is what I do here. I do this all live so that you guys can see the process of either madness or genius or a combination of those two things coming together to make something that we are going to love. We did this with the buckwheat pizza and I want to do something similar to that. So what I thought I would do is I would take these soaked buckwheat and then I would put it through the juicer with my homogenizing blade, that blade that doesn't have the holes so that it doesn't, the liquid doesn't come through. That would be the one that you would use as well for making nice scream and stuff like that. Let me get it out and show you. So I'm going to put it through, run it through using this blade. And I'm going to make, uh, if you were to put this in the dehydrator before you do that and get these all dehydrated out so that, yes, you still got, you've got them sprouted, but now you're drying them again. Um, and then you put it through the mill, then you will come up with a fine grain, a fine, almost like a flour, a coarse grain flour. 
But this time what I'm going to do is, number one, I didn't have time to dehydrate them. I guess I could have. It only takes a couple hours, but I didn't because I was lazy. I was resting. I was doing other things. I was getting ready for class and for a call. I was having a detox morning, basically, and I was like, I can't do one more thing. Um, so anyhow, but you can see that these are, let's see if I put this on here and show it to you. You can see how these are sprouting. You see that little that little sprout that's coming out of the tip there, right? You see that little that little stem. So these are these have sprouted. These have taken the enzymes contained within the seed, the dormant enzymes. And buckwheat, for the record, is not a grain. It's not a wheat. It's actually a fruit seed. So it's alkaline. And what you want is um, you want to sprout them if at all possible because that uh, takes it from a dormant seed into an activated, active, alive, living plant. And the enzymes that come together to create all of that burst a whole new level of nutrition and incredible value for our bodies when we do that, when we sprout. So you guys have seen me do the, um, the Ivar crackers before. And what I want to do though, is I want to, and the Ivar crackers were just the buckwheat seeds like this, kind of coarsely chopped up and uh, a jar of Ivar, which is a red pepper spread. You guys have seen me do that, right? This time what I want to do, I do want to make another, um, another batch of buckwheat crackers. But what I want to do is I want to see if I can't take this buckwheat and put some, I could do it with putting some Ivar. I can make some Ivar sort of flavored wraps, but I kind of want to see how close to just a regular neutral yet delicious bread that I can get going using just the Ivar. Now, another thing that I have, another ingredient that I have here that I really want to make are, I want to make some wraps using this plantain. And plantain or plantain, as some people call it, is in the banana family and these get much larger than a banana these have been frozen and thawed out and uh, i just froze them because i wasn't going to use them in time and i wanted to make sure that i kept them for later so i also want to use this i've done a plantain or plantain um uh, tortilla before and it comes out really really good we really like it it's it's got a little bit of a sweetness and a little bit of a savoriness all at the same time, but a really nice flavor and texture. So I want to do that because I know that that's going to work really, really well. But I, I really want to do like a bread style. So let's start with that one um, and put those over there. Oh, yeah. So if you're not following me on the Instagram or the Facebook, go over and, and check it out because I reveal some of these things that don't make it to a class for a taste test. They make it to the, the reveal on um, Instagram. Mm -hmm. Amy, it happened last week too, before the no foods. I don't know, babe. Happy Christmas Eve, everyone. Yes, indeed. Yes, Elizabeth, we're so glad that you are here. We have other young folks in the class as well, so stick around, babe. I went to bed with an awful headache around 11.30. I didn't see the stories. Well, they're still there. They last for 24 hours, so go, go check. Hey, Stephanie, how are you? We have been watching off and on for a few weeks. Awesome, Sherry. Okay, good, good, good. So glad to see that. So glad. You're welcome. Rockstar Ruiz is in the house. We love your energy. Thank you so much, Sherry and Elizabeth. Alana says, love you all. My heart goes out to you all with anxiety. Yeah, it can be really crippling for sure. I have gallstones. What is your opinion on the produce I should consume most of? Nuts make my gallstones hurt when consumed. Me too. Do not consume nuts. You want to stay away from those or concentrated food. Your gallbladder is going to be healed with this protocol of raw living food, raw living food. Very important to heal the gallbladder, very important uh, filter for your, uh, your lymphatic system. It's really, really important. So we want to get those gallstones healed up. If you're able to do any of the Dr. Morse herbal formulas, 
I would definitely go with the liver gallbladder formula as well as the adrenal formula, the kidney formula, the bowel formula, the endocrine formula. It all depends on how much you want to do, but know that the number one and most important thing that you can do to heal from any of these ailments that we suffer from doesn't matter what it is. It's always the same protocol. Go on a fruit frenzy. Go and clean your body out with fruits. You can do that in the form of raw foods as well. You can include vegetables in there. No nuts for you because that gallbladder needs to heal up. And yeah, nuts are very hard to digest when you have gallbladder issues. Hard to digest anyhow. So you want to be careful. They're concentrated foods. They can, you know, for some people be really, really um, uh, hard to digest. So I would just be careful with that. I would be careful with that. Try to keep your diet as simple as possible. Stephanie, that would really, really help as well. Hey, hey, Emoji King, did I hear tapioca pudding? I'll put that on my chewing food list for when I eat again. Grape, lemon, coconut water, and herbs in the, uh, uh, and herbs for brunch. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I'm so glad to hear that. Let's get the juicer out because I want to get these, um, I want to get these going. <laughs> yes, the real juicy detox. Thank you so, so much. You're so, so welcome, my, my darling. I'm happy to help. So I am going to take these um, buckwheat groats that I have soaked, and I am going to put them through my juicer where it will turn into a really beautiful, fine meal. Uh, and then I'm going to see what I'm inspired to. I don't have a recipe written down. So if you are interested in following along, then I recommend, um, getting a pen and paper out or getting another device out, notepad out, whatever, and write down stuff as I add it, because I, I will also write down on my side, I'm going to get my journal. We're going to see what works, baby. Let's, let's figure this out together. Okay, let me plug this in. And let us let us begin, shall we? Are you guys all ready for Christmas? Tell me some tell me some Christmas stuff. Uh, did you go shopping? Did you get the kids lots of stuff? Talk to me. Tell me. Give me the lowdown. What is it? What is going on for Christmas where you are? Is it Christmas tonight? I know those of you in Europe, some of you in Europe, in Sweden, and Louise was just telling me that it is her Christmas Eve there, and the kids are so excited. Oh my God, such a magical time of year. I love it. Okay, so here we have the Omega 800, my absolute, one of my favorite tools in the kitchen. And I'm going to use the homogenizer blade, this guy right here. This is the regular blade. You see this? This is the regular blade. This is a regular filter, rather. It looks like that at the, at the back end. This is the, this is the part that would sit right over the hole here down below here, this would just go in like this, and it would filter out the pulp and bring the juice down into the little receptacle down here. You see that, right? But since we want to not juice this, we want to just grind it up, we're gonna use this attachment. This is, called, this is like a homogenizer and it just, grinds everything all up, but keeps it together. It homogenizes all in one, your juice, as it were, and the pulp. So we're going to put that homogenizer filter on like so. I don't even think this doesn't even go on when not necessary. And we are going to make some flour for lack of a better, you know, for lack of a better word, we're going to make some of this buckwheat 
meal. It's not really going to be like a flour because it's not dry, but it's going to be like a buckwheat meal. Hi, Tiffany. How are you? Welcome to class, babe. Robin says, I'm busy cleaning the house as my youngest son and family and oldest son will be sleeping over Christmas Eve and then we'll be celebrating Christmas morning. Oh my gosh, so excited to have them all home again. That is so great. Isn't it good? Um, Danica, my older daughter, is coming home as well. And we've got the room downstairs. We've got to do something about the cat peed on the carpet. It's like, no. And I've been trying to get it out. And I've been using all kinds of stuff that's probably really toxic, which I know it is. Chlorine, stop. I won't even begin to tell you. I think I'm just going to cut out, out off that piece of carpet. It's like, ah. Uh, really mad about that but anyhow anyhow what you gonna do right what you gonna do so what we're gonna do here oh i want to rinse out these um i want to rinse these out one more time to make sure they're absolutely rinsed out because they can kind of get a little bit of sliminess right on on the bottom here and it's kind of like yeah it can smell funky sometimes so let's rinse this out Okay, so we've got that nicely rinsed out. Rockstar says, just ordered three bottles of Dr. Morris Heal All Capsules. Awesome, you're gonna really love those. Watermelon juice for dinner tonight, nice. Uh, just got a dehydrator, yes! Oh my God, Tara, I'm so excited. So excited. So we're just gonna feed the the buckwheat through here. I've never done this before with it wet. I've only done it before using the dried, but don't see why this won't work. Oh, there it comes. All right, so it's going to make like this paste. Oh, yeah. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I feel like a mad scientist over here. And I'm going to put it right into a little mixing bowl. Like so. Okay, so this is going to work. So let's do this. Just... When you are experimenting and you're doing new things in the kitchen, just jump in, all right? Don't be afraid. Just jump in and just see what works. Look at that. So it's taking these sprouted groats and it is gently masticating it. It's like our chewing. It just replicates our the chewing action of our teeth, right? And that is how it would look if we put like frozen coconut through here. It would kind of come out looking like this, like nice cream. But what we've got here is a nice thick paste almost of this buckwheat. I'm going to do one more. I'm just going to get the plunger and get that pushed down. Do you guys like these experiments in the kitchen with me? 
I love that you are here. I love that we're doing this together, you know. And uh, something is just telling me to add in some kind of seed after that, just to naturally get this stuff all cleaned out of here. But yeah, this is going to be, I think this is going to be really cool. So what should we put in there? Should we put some pumpkin seeds in there? Chestnuts. Okay. Chestnuts it is. Something in my head just said put some chestnuts and put some sunflower seeds as well. So we're doing this. Um, uh, I'm using these chestnuts. organic roasted chestnuts. So, okay. So the bread technically, you know, it's got a little bit of cooked stuff in it, but you can leave out the chestnuts if you want, but I'm still calling it raw. It's still raw vegan wrap in my mind. going to grab another one of those. Great question. Burns, what are you having for Christmas dinner? I made the brown meat mushroom marinated and coated with buckwheat blended with herbs and paprika, onion powder, garlic powder, and by Kara Brotman. Very nice. Oh, my gosh. That sounds delicious. That sounds absolutely heavenly. By the way, these this is what the chestnuts look like, the roasted chestnuts, just like you would get them, you know, in the shell in the grocery store when it comes out through the homogenizer. It looks like that. I don't know. Definitely we'll have pastels and um, wraps <laughs> and juice. I was thinking of making a cheesecake or maybe some, some nice scream some nice cream with um, um, coconut, coconut and raspberry, nice cream. I thought of maybe that. The dial was set on five actually for that. It was set on five, but I don't think it really matters. I think whatever, play around with the dial on the side, but this is, this is what it did to the chestnut. So it just completely grinds that up. And then I'm going to throw in some seeds. I'm just going by what my intuition is telling me to do here. I'm not going on any recipe. Um, I'm just going by what the divine is telling me to put in here right now. This is 260 grams of, of sunflower seeds. So let's put some of those in there. Just enough to clean out the machine, really. And to just add a little bit of that nutty flavor to it. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just making this up as I go. These are really good. These are raw sunflower seeds. Oh, yeah. You got a beautiful flavor. See that meal coming out? That's a sunflower. more grainy, you know? And then we're going to get in and mix all that up. I'm looking for something to use as a, to poke down some of these stuck bits on the side.
Hello. Huh? Mm hmm. Okay, so let's see how this looks. We're going to clean this out. Oh, my God, Dolly, you're so sweet. <laughs> Dolly got these little Christmas decorations for the kids. Kaya's got hers. Kaya's got hers already from a few years ago. That one is for Brookie. And this one is for Danica. Oh, yeah, the unicorn. That is perfect for her. Mm -hmm. Thank you, babe. Mm -hmm. That is really sweet. Yep. There you go. Mm -hmm. What is it, kitties? Can you give them some food, babe? Okay, so this gets a little bit, like, gummed up in there, but that's okay. That's all right. Just get out whatever you can. Yes, Dot, you're getting some food. Yeah, yes, it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> They're so vocal. Can you guys hear Dot? So we're just going to take this out, and we're just going to you know, scoop out the, the excess amount in that. It's so much fun having you home during the day. And as you guys know, I have a juicer just too lazy to use it. What are you talking about? If our only option would be buckwheat flour, how many cups do you think we'd need? I don't know. But what I want to teach you guys is what texture to look for when you're doing it. So that's more the important question. I don't know. Two cups, three cups, it depends on how big of a batch you end up making. Experimenting would be the best way to figure that out. Yes, Emoji King, that watermelon juice, watermelon sugar. Hi, baby. Grocery store by my house has fresh squeezed orange juice machine, $10.64 ounce. That's crazy. Yeah. Rockstar. Easy for me and my busy schedule. Yeah, I have a juicer, but too lazy to use it. If I was getting fresh pressed orange juice for $10 for 64 ounces, how much is that? That's two liters. That's $5 a liter. I'd be, why would I juice? I wouldn't juice either. Hey, Dally, says Cindy. Is he off for Christmas? Yes, he's off for Christmas now. It's official. So one of the important things that I want you guys to um, to do and to remember is that whenever you're in the uh, 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 raw vegan or any kitchen for that matter, clean up as you go. It's going to make the end cleanup game so much easier. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do my extreme cleaning as I call it. And I should bring you guys over. Let me bring you over like for real because this is happening and I'm going to need to really get in here and clean this out a little bit more. So want to come over with me? Let's go. Come, come here. Come here. There we are. There we are. So I'm going to Okay, we're going to go clean. We're going to clean together. And one of the reasons why I don't usually like doing this is because the lighting here is so harsh. Oi. You look at my sink. <laughs> you look at the sink. So 
producer is really easy to clean out. And usually I don't have to do any of this brushing and cleaning like this, but because we had because we had all of that sticky stuff in there, it just needs a little bit of extra TLC. that goes right back onto the juicer right away. Extreme cleaning, baby! Do you guys do extreme cleaning when you do your, your food prep? You should try it. Because there's nothing worse, there is nothing worse than having a huge mess to clean up after you do all that cooking, right? And this is just a little bit more cleaning than it requires. Juicing, usually I just rinse them right on off. It doesn't usually take this much elbow grease, as they say. Once you get that done, then you don't have to come back and do it again. All right. All right, all right, all right. And I think we're finished with the juicer for now, anyhow. Let me show you how quick and easy this is to put back together. In case you haven't seen that part before. So the shoot part just goes in there and that knob turns. The auger clicks in. And then I put the juicing blade back in because that's usually what is used. And then the cap, and then the backflow valve, and that is it. She's done. And that goes there. We are ready to rock and roll again. Yes, we are. So now that we've got that all sorted out. And we've got that all taken care of. Now we can go on to, uh, to figuring out how to make this mixture turn into some kind of bread. And we need a bigger bowl for that to go down. Right, Dot? Right? Is sitting on her favorite chair over on the side. Okay, so let's put this into here. So here we have 200 grams of uh, chestnuts, roasted chestnuts. We have um, Gosh, how much of that bag would you say? We used less than half, 250 grams. So maybe like about 100 grams of sesame seeds. Not that much, just a little bit. Because I was just inspired to use a little bit. Uh, 
All right, so that is that. So we're just going to kind of start working that in. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just making this shit up as I go. <laughs> All right, so basically, I'm just going to go in there and start mixing this all together. And this is just the, the buckwheat, sprouted buckwheat groats. And I am going to want to mix into here some water as well. Just want to get some liquid into there. Or do we? I don't know. Here's the thing. I, I want to get some water in there because I also want to incorporate into here some psyllium, right, as a nice binder as well and to get some extra psyllium into our diet. <laughs> Is anybody writing the recipe down? I don't know, babe. I don't know that you, this may not, this may not go anywhere. And then again, it might. I do wanna get this mixing around with some water. I know this seems like a crazy way to do this recipe, but maybe I don't want water. Maybe I want to use some of that coconut milk. Where's that can of coconut milk? Maybe I want to use a little splash of coconut milk. How are you guys doing out there? Are you good? Are you good? We're figuring this out. Kitties, kitties. So I also want to season this up before I put in that coconut milk. I want to season it up a little bit. Got a little bit of sea salt. And I want to put a little bit of onion powder. That much. And, uh, and that might be it. Let me get this plant open. Hi, Dottie. I'm gonna use a little bit of this coconut milk. I think this will give a nice texture to the final product. Man, my finger is really sore still from yesterday. Owie kazowie. I've no idea if this is going to work. I hope it does. Because I want to get something that looks and has the texture and has the feel of a nice bread type wrap. I don't know if it's going to work at all. It feels like a hot mess right now. Robin is thinking some Italian mixed seasoning. I was thinking the same thing. I'm going to get some. Okay, so that is like a really sticky dough, which is kind of what you want at this stage. What do you guys think? You think this is going to be a success? 
Hard to tell. Could either be a disaster or it could be the next thing since sliced white bread. Yes, Dot. Oh, my goodness. It's nice out. So she wants in and out and in and out. Mmm. I like that. That's a good thing. When I taste the batter and I like it, that's what you want. Just get that off my fingers. Let me wash my hands again. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So one of the benefits of doing this, I'll wait and see how you like it, LOL. One of the benefits, oh, let me put a little bit of, I think this is Italian seasoning. This was that secret spice, the secret ingredient seasoning that I didn't know what it actually was. I think it's either Herbe de Provence or Italian. It's either French seasoning or it is Italian seasoning, but it's going in there. Thank you so much for the suggestion, Robin. Mm, it smells beautiful. Definitely has some thyme and some rosemary in there. Okay. So what we want to do now is I want a texture and a dough that when dried out is going to have some flexibility to it. It's going to be able to bolt, bend and fold in a wrap. You know, I don't want it to be crispy like a cracker. So what do we need to add into a recipe to give it some of that flex and fold? Well, some oil would be a good idea, a little bit of olive oil. Let's add in a little bit of olive oil, just a, just a little drizzle. And yeah, one of the reasons why I love the idea of doing this with the sprouted buckwheat seeds is that sprouts are alkaline. <laughs> Yay! So we know that once we sprout our food, we are packing it full of dynamic nutrition. So that's why I wanted to use them as sprouted. That's why I always sprout my buckwheat groats. So that is a really nice thick batter. You see that, right? What I also want to add in here for a little bit of that flexibility in the, in the wrap is I want to add in some psyllium husk. So I've got a tiny bit of psyllium husk here. I would say that's about a quarter of a cup. Quarter of a cup of psyllium husk. Yes, it is. There we are. How are you guys doing? How are you doing? You doing good? Awesome. By the way, thank you so much for coming to class today and for popping on and for checking out what's happening in the Real Juicy Tea Talks kitchen today. It is the day before uh, Christmas Eve, unless you are like Anne Louise in Sweden and it is Christmas Eve over there. They celebrate their Christmas Day on December 24th and their Christmas Eve, December 23rd. I want to thank you so much. I know you guys are doing a lot. You've got a lot going on with your families, and yet here you are. Beautiful. Awesome. Okay, so I think I, think I want to start just putting this out to make some tortillas, but let's first taste it, as we know we need to do. Mmm. 
I like the nutty undertone of the, the roasted chestnuts and the sesame seeds, just a little bit of sesame seeds, uh, sunflower seeds. The Italian seasoning was a great idea. Thank you, Robin. Mm. The olive oil comes through really nicely. And that coconut milk. I like this recipe. I like it. I like it. Yeah. I think it's going to be really good. So let's get out our tortilla press. Let me have a drink of grapefruit juice. Let's clean up our work area. Here we go. So I use this tortilla press in case you guys haven't seen me do this before. Something that we used to use in Trinidad, where I am originally from, to make our pastels. Yes. I need some saran wrap. But this is the type of thing that I want you to see. Remember before you were asking how much how much flour would that be? I really don't know, but this is the this is the uh texture and the level of uh dampness in the dough. So it's a very sticky but it's a very stiff dough. And I think that is Pretty much perfect. I'm hoping so anyhow. We shall soon find out. But what I do know is you don't want it too stiff. You don't want it too wet. Kind of looks like really wet porridge. Really thick. Really dense dough. So what I've got here is I've got two pieces of saran wrap on my uh my press so that it does not stick the dough does not stick to the press okay and let's get a scooper out and <clears throat> i like using this ice cream scoop i think that works really well i'm just gonna Scoop up one scooper amount, and I'm just going to put it right here in the middle of the press, just like so. I'm going to move that out of my way, and then we're just going to pull down the top, and we're just going to press it. Oh my goodness, that looks amazing. <clears throat> that looks awesome. I'm very happy with that. Really beautiful. So now, where's our sheet? So now what we do is we take a sheet. This is the one that has the holes that kind of comes with a lot of the dehydrators now. And what I'm going to do is, <clears throat> first of all, find a spot where I can put all of this stuff. Oi. I kind of wrecked my, wrecked an edge there, but that's okay. Just smooth it down. Very forgiving, as you can see. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pick it up like so. And I'm going to just lay it onto the dehydrator sheet. Peel it back. And there you have it, my friends. One tortilla down. 
one done. Let's get some other ones done. Do you guys have any questions for me today? What is up out there in the real juicy detox world? What's up in your world? What is preventing this from oh, garlic clove? I got a garlic clove. Okay, so let's keep going. Let's get this show on the road, as they say. So just going to put that down right there on the middle. Press it over, hold down the top. Saran wrap. Oh my God, I've got too much shit on my counter. Hey, Dot, what are you doing in there? Go away. No, you don't need to be playing in the bags. Not now. Tonya, it's like having a two-year-old over here with this cat. I'm not even kidding you. Okay, so that was really easy. Did you see how easy that was? So again, you're just going to lay it down and remove the paper. So only time will tell how these really work, okay? Time will tell. Will they be flexible? I think they will be because of that added fat in the olive oil and because of the coconut, oops, because of the fat in the coconut milk, but also because of the, uh, the fiber in the psyllium husk. That is going to kind of like forms a structure of uh, uh, not a rebar really, but you know, binding structure together. Wouldn't this be cool if this actually works? <laughs> God burns, you're hilarious. Yeah, wouldn't it be cool if it works? For real though. Okay, so we're gonna slide it off like that. Look at how beautiful that is. I don't know if it's gonna work, but it tastes good going down. So as long as something tastes good going in. I like it. I like a little bit of that sunflower flavor. The buckwheat is nice. It's not a, a heavy or, you know, I like the flavor of the buckwheat. Hi, Dot. Yeah, I'll let you out. Hang on a second. The thing that I did not like about the carrot and onion bread that I made yesterday is it was too strong. It was like, oh, it was too overpowering. When you have something like a bread, you almost want it. Oops, that's a little bit close to the edge, but that's okay. You almost want it um, neutral. You know, you don't want a super strong flavor. So there you have it. There are four tortillas. Now you can sprinkle this with, look, you can even pick that up to move it over. That's how, that's how beautiful and, you know, dense this kind of bread is. I think that's going to really be good, you guys. So I'm going to stick that in the dehydrator and uh, I'm going to come back and make some more. Hang on. We got this, baby.
Okay, so let's do this again. Let's do another one. All right, I'm feeling confident, which is great. You want to be confident in the kitchen when you're making food, but I think this is going to be, yeah. I'm really happy with this, you guys. And from everything that I've worked on before, I can really, I really feel like this is going to dehydrate nicely. It's got a beautiful, it's got a beautiful firm texture. And if you wanted to turn this into a patty or a pastel, as we call it, or a tamale, you can totally do that. I need to work on my filling though. My filling with the Burnsy, uh, the Burnsy Burger ground beef, the, the pretend meat, great texture and everything, but I need to make a bit of a marinade, a bit of a marinara sauce for, for that to be used as a, um, pie filling. So I got to work on that a little bit because it was a little bit dry. So we're just pressing these and putting these back down, making these beautiful tortillas. It's very relax. Oops, sorry. It's very relaxing, very relaxing to do. Just use this ice cream scoop like so. And you can definitely season this any way that you like. We put in some um, onion powder and some Himalayan salt, pink Himalayan sea salt, some Italian seasoning, or maybe it was Herbe de Provence. I don't know. You can put, make these into a curry flavor. You can put some Ivar in the mix. I mean, it's the, the possibilities are truly endless. You can even make this into a sweet dough. Right. Use this as a starting point for what you guys want for your recipes. And I really recommend that before we start on our um, five day warm up next Sunday, I recommend that you start pre prepping some food for yourself. So if these turn out really well, <laughs> I will be back to give you the full write down, written down recipe. Okay, but let's first see if these go well, like Alana says, let's first see how you like it. And uh, let's see how it comes out before we get too excited about this whole wrap situation. But I have to say, this dough, I really think I'm going to like it. And I like stuff that is going to Mm. Give me a taste and a texture that is really close to bread. And I think this might be it. I think this might be it. And it was pretty easy. The ingredients were not too, um, you know, over the top at all. Some sprouted buckwheat groats, some roasted chestnuts, or you can leave those out some sesame seeds and um let me get another rock let me get another rock and then you can definitely um add in any of your seasoning profiles that you love if you love more garlic you can put garlic in here i just did it really simple right now because i don't want to get too 
crazy on the, the seasonings. But I am definitely excited about this one. When the Burns gets excited, you get excited too, because that's when you know we're creating some magic in here, baby. Creating some magic. So somebody was asking, what are the things that you are going to make for your family, Burns? I'm making pastels, which are made with corn, which I don't recommend you doing if you're on a really, you want to keep it really, really super clean for your healing journey. I do not find that corn affects me too negatively when I have it on occasion. So it is one of those sometimes foods, not all the time foods. So I'm going to be making that. And that is basically a corn um, tortilla type situation with um, usually a meat filling. And we made a really cool raw vegan Bernsey burger filling. Just clean out the inside of this scoop because this is the last one. Just like so. Mm. Mm -hmm. You see how easy that is to just drop them down on there. And I'm going to go pop these into the dehydrator and then I'll be right back because um, I've got that plantain that I want to make into some kind of plantain wrap. So let's see if we can't do that. But this dough, I think this dough is really good to work with. You can even roll it into a ball. You know, it's a, it's a nice consistency for sure. Mm. Mm hmm. A little bit of that nuttiness coming through from the from the roasted chestnuts, which are really good, which are alkaline for you as well. Um, so in terms of the ingredients, the roasted chestnuts does not really qualify 100 percent as raw, but we are not cooking the bread. So in that regards, it is raw. And remember, you can have 80% cooked, 80% uh, raw, 20% cooked and have a totally vital, healthy life. So for the most part, there's a little bit of cooked material in here, but we're going to be putting it into the dehydrator, not the oven. So it's not going to go above 120 degrees. This is going to be a perfect meal that you can enjoy as a taco, as a wrap, as a quesadilla. There's so many different versatile things you can do with this. So let's get this in the, in the dehydrator.
Okay. Those look really good. Those look really good. How are you guys doing? Are you good? Everything okay? Awesome. <laughs> okay, so let's make something with this plantain, shall we? But first, let me munch on a date because I'm feeling a little peckish. I'm feeling a little peckish. Mm. Midjool dates are so good. Knowing what to eat when we get a little peckish, when we feel a little bit snacky, you know, a little bit like I want something yummy to eat. Mm. Yes. Okay, so we're going to make another dip, another, sorry, flatbread. I've made this before. Believe it or not. Believe it or not. Where is my recipe? Plantain tortillas. I did the first time I did them, I did six cups of very ripe blackened plantains, three quarter cups of water, blend till smooth, added in a quarter cup of flaxseed meal with a cup, half a cup of water, make into a vegan egg, mix together and let sit a quarter of a cup of sea moss gel. So that's what I did the first time. Then the next time I did it, I used five very ripe frozen thawed plantain, a blended, came to four cups, half a cup of sprouted groats, half a cup of buckwheat flour, half a cup, uh, well, sorry, one tablespoon of green seasoning, three pimento peppers, half of an onion, and then one teaspoon of chipotle powder, half a teaspoon of cumin, quarter of a teaspoon of black pepper. And that was fire. That was like, we could not stop eating them. So that's kind of what I want to do now. So let's try that out, shall we? So first I have right here, I just so happen to have five very ripe plantain. Plantain are like bananas. They're the kind that you see in the grocery store that have the blackened skin when they're really ripe. And a lot of people think, ew, no, that is like, yeah. So these I peeled and I had frozen and these were defrosted yesterday. So let's get that in there. And this is going to go really, really quickly. Crystal says, I've been snacking on them and figs all the time. They're so good for you. So good. I add a little OJ to my five, Fab Five tincture. Can't stand the taste by itself. Definitely, you can do that. Even for kids, sometimes you can use a little bit of maple syrup, make a little, you know, yummy tincture paste. I, but uh, yeah, it's the alcohol. It's the, it's the same thing with my Essiac. Uh, mixture. Remember, extreme cleaning is going to save your behind when it comes to your food prep time. Okay, so five very ripe bananas, uh, plantains, excuse me. I want a half of a cup of sprouted groats, which I've got right here, the buckwheat seeds that I have sprouted by soaking and then soaking for two to four hours and then rinsing out, rinsing it out and then just leaving it in the colander like this on the countertop, rinsing that every, you know, two or three times a day. And then rinsing it out right before you 
put it in right before you use it. Uh, I need a half of a cup of buckwheat flour. So let me get that out. And I'm going to blend it all in the, um, in, the, in the big blender. That's coconut. Buckwheat. So I'm going to put half a cup of buckwheat flour into here. Let me just think that part through a little bit. There's no other... There's no other moisture in here. So for now, I'm just going to leave that out. I will stir that in at the very end or blend it in at the very end. Um, green seasoning, pimento peppers, half of an onion. I'll be right back. Okay, get that over there. Um, I don't want the whole cutting board over here right now. Where are my little, where are my little guys? Okay, so these are the pimento uh, peppers and these are seasoning peppers from Trinidad. There's no heat to them at all, but there is a distinct flavor, which is really beautiful. Where's my knife? Oh my God. I got it. I got it and I'm on it. So I'm gonna just put these whole right in there because the blender is gonna take care of that. Yes, it will. Don't doubt, Burns. You know it will uh, compost. Okay. You didn't eat lunch, did you? You know my brain is like, pew. I did not eat lunch. Well, I've had a banana and I had a couple of dates. Yeah, I ate lunch. Mm. That's all the lunch I really need is some power juice, right? Sometimes I miss my midday dose when I'm working, so I ordered the Heal All capsules to take to work. Okay, good. Plus, I think they help by going straight to my gut. Yeah, so the whenever you have capsules, that is going to get broken down in the uh, in the stomach and in the in the lower intestines, in the small intestines. So that's why we use the capsules. Yep. Robin says, can't wait to see how those wraps turn out. Have to go, by, but we'll catch the replay of the plantain recipe. Wishing everyone a great day. Thanks so much for t uh, popping in, Robin. I cannot wait for you guys to try this. I know the plantain one is going to be like, oh, yeah, baby. Okay, so green seasoning. I need to get my green seasoning, and I need to get a little piece of an onion. Actually, I think I'm going to go up to the Chinese supermarket later on today after, after class. I'm going to say, Dali, I need you to drive me up to Kitchener. I don't feel like driving. I don't feel like driving, man. I don't feel like driving. So I'm going to put one tablespoon of this green seasoning because I need to get I need to get some fresh thyme. I need to get some more ingredients to make my green seasoning. So I've got one tablespoon of the green seasoning going in. And I was going to put some chopped green onion instead of that white onion, especially after using that white onion yesterday. I was like not... Not impressed. Oh, I also have onion flakes. Why don't I just use onion flakes? I think that'll be really good, but I want to stir those in afterwards. You know what I mean? Because I want them to be flaky throughout. So the, the onion flakes and the buckwheat flour, I will mix in afterwards. 
the green onion just smells like Trinidad, you guys. It's so good. So good. Um, so I want a teaspoon. I want some other seasonings. So let's see here. A teaspoon of chipotle. So we got some chipotle, some cumin, uh, cumin, and some black pepper. And I'm going to put a little bit of garlic in here as well. Just for funsies. Just for funsies. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to go crazy on the seasoning, you know? <clears throat> because we got a, a lot going on with that green seasoning in there. So a teaspoon of garlic. And before the seasonings that I had put in were one teaspoon of the chipotle. So we'll go ahead and put a teaspoon of the chipotle. And this is going to help give the plantain a savory um palette as opposed to um, a very sweet one. So we've got half a teaspoon of cumin, just like so. And oh, I want to put in some turmeric or turmeric. You can also put in a little chili powder, uh, uh, curry powder if you wanted. Where is my turmeric? I had bought some new recently. Paprika. I can't find it, so I'm not going to go looking. I can't be bothered right now. Um, quarter of a teaspoon of black pepper. A tiny bit more to make up a true quarter. And I think I added in the garlic already. I'm going to assume that I did. I don't remember. Okay. And... I'm going to put some um, coconut milk in here. So I'm going to say, we'll just measure it since we're measuring this one. I'm going to say three tablespoons of coconut milk. Get it really nice and creamy. And I do want to put in some psyllium husk into that as well. <clears throat> container. I buy my containers, by the way. I, I realize that if I have them in these storage containers from the bulk barn that it's much better in my in my cupboard than bags bags tend to get no 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 okay so i'm going to put in a quarter of a cup of psyllium and that is going to help everything come together and bind together really nicely and be flexible <clears throat> And let's put that on the blender and see how this comes together, shall we? <clears throat> let's do this. Okay, let's have a look, shall we? So yes, it's got this nice creamy, mmm, that smells so good. That smells so good. I'm just going to use my finger as a spatula as one does in a home kitchen. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yep, my hands are clean. The smell of the, uh, oh, perfect. A little bit of heat, that green seasoning, excellent. I love this one. I love it. So 
So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to empty this back into this bowl, the same bowl that we use for the other um, recipe. Now this would be perfect. You can go ahead and do this right onto the dehydrator sheet, but I happen to like it a little bit more um, I like I like using the pastel press, you know, the tortilla press. So I cannot, this would be too wet in there. So I am going to add in a little bit of buckwheat flour to make those, get it to that consistency, like a little bit of a dough. Where is my spatula? right where I put it in the drawer. Okay, then. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scrape this out of the, um, the blender. It's fairly easy. There we go. Get all of that good stuff. Don't leave anybody behind. Don't leave anybody behind. You gotta get all of that goodness out. Yes. Just takes a little while, but it's so worth it, you know? Especially when you know it's gonna taste amazing because you've made it before. <laughs> And it smells amazing right now in the blender. I wish you guys could smell this. It's got that nice earthy aroma. Now, with that green seasoning, I really quite frankly don't care if anybody else in the house doesn't like it. You know, Dali and his dislike of cilantro. And in green seasoning, that's one of the strong flavors that comes through if you use a little bit more than you should as I have done in the past but for the most part it shouldn't be too strong of a uh, flavor like cilantro but again if you don't like cilantro don't do it if you're wondering what I'm talking about when I say this green seasoning thing it is in one of the descriptions of the, the, the previous videos, the one where I made the Trinidadian pastels, I should do a recipe. Uh, when I, if I get, if I go and get those, that green seasoning, and if I have the ingredients for it, I will make green seasoning tomorrow with you guys. I will make it and show you how easy it is. We'll talk about the ingredients. I got sprayed by my faucet. I got a shower in the kitchen. I love the Chinese markets. They always have great fruit. Oh, there's only about five of them by my house. Yeah, we have some really good ones here too, but most of the really big ones are, mm, they're a bit of a drive for me too. Okay, I'm going to go put these pimento peppers back in the freezer because I don't want to, them to get unfrozen, and then I'll be right back. Okay, now to this mixture... 
I feel better when I take the capsules instead of the tinctures. Yeah, so then definitely go ahead with that. Um, to this, I'm going to add just a teaspoon of the onion flakes. Mm. So right now, this is a really wet batter almost, more of a batter than a dough. And I think I'm going to add just a little bit of sea salt. If you don't want to add the salt, by all means, leave the salt out, right? But if you want to, if you're okay with that, put a little bit in. Now, oh, that salt is burning my finger. That salt is burning my finger. Okay, to this, first of all, let's just clean up a little bit. A little bit of an extreme cleanup situation going down, if you know what I'm saying. Get those onion flakes back on my spice door. Move this out of the way. Okay, so we are going to do a half of a cup of the buckwheat flour. So we're just going to go with just like so. We're just going to start to fold that in until it just gets nicely incorporated. And I just get this buckwheat flour at the bulk barn local to me. So this is what we want. We want a little bit more of a stiff dough rather than a thick batter. Just like so. We'll put the rest in just like that. My finger really hurts. Okay, let's go. Let's go. We don't have time for fingers to be sore. Okay. So we're just going to lightly fold this in until everything kind of comes together. It's still fairly sticky, this dough. It is, but it's not as bad as before. So let's again taste this because you want it to taste good going into the dehydrator. Mm. Got a nice warmth on the tongue. Mm-hmm. That's going to be amazing as a wrap. You're going to have a little bit of that sweet component that you, everything that we eat should have a nice balance between the sweet, the savory, the salty, the sour. And I think this, this, this freaking works, my friends. It just works. It's savory. It's got a little bit of that sweetness from the plantain itself. the green seasoning. Mm. Now this is something that I would serve my friends. You know what I'm saying? If you were to come over to my house for, for Christmas and I were to pull out some of these bad boys, I would be, oh yeah, I'd be very proud to serve this. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So let's get this onto the dehydrator, shall we? It's going to be super easy. We're gonna do it just like we did the last one. This is so good. Oh my God, this is so good. So we've got the psyllium husk in there for a little bit of flexibility. We've got the coconut um, milk. We've got the plantain itself. One, I find that whenever I dehydrate anything with any fruit in it, it's got that natural foldability and flexibility to it. 
So I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty excited about this. Let me get a tray. Hang on. Hello. Are we live? I think we're live. <laughs> oh, mom's in the dehydrator. How's everyone doing today? Hey, mom. No money coming back. Uh, Christmas. Okay. 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 I know. Okay, so here we go. We are making these plantain wraps. So let's do it. How's your Christmas prep going, Pascal? Uh, not too much. I only really have to get like stuff for my niece. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's yeah. good. 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 Ooh, these are going to be really good, you guys. Okay, so here we have it. There it is. Now, I just went and I had a little sneak peek at the tortillas that we just did the buckwheat ones that are in the dehydrator now. And I don't know if those are going to work as wraps or if they're going to be too crispy. I think they might be too crispy. I think we just made some chips, which is also good because you need chips with some dip. You know what I'm saying? So here we have it. This is the first plantain wrap down on the, on the sheet. And let's keep on going. So we're just scooping out using an ice cream scooper. Really super easy. Just pop it down right there. And we're just going to press, baby. We're just going to press it out. Linda! Oh, my goodness. I just made a batch of coconut chia pudding, added four dates to the blender, poured over chopped bananas, and sprinkled with cacao chips and a little cinnamon. Ooh, that sounds good. We should make that. We should make that because I'm almost finished the wrap portion. Can you believe that? It's 1.48 and I'm almost done the wraps for today. That was a great use of our time in class today, I feel. So I'm just going to, again, just roll that down. I just am so happy with this, with this press, I tell you. So again, just scoop it out right down on the press. Just so easy, isn't it? Like I said yesterday, it's almost like meditative a little bit, you know? And these you don't even need to flip over or or do anything with. I think these will be done in the dehydrator after about three hours, maybe. You just leave them in there at 113 to 118 degrees, nothing more than 120, right? Because above 120 and then you're cooking out the enzymes in the food. We don't want to do that. We've got lovely sprouted enzyme action going on in the dough. And we've got the live food itself of the, oops. Oh, snap. Oh, shoot. I got to commit. I got to commit to that one. Overlapping a little bit. It's okay. It's all good. It'll still taste great. It will still taste amazing. But yeah, I'm, oh my God, burns. 
<laughs> there you have it. A little bit like messed up here, but that's okay. That's just called real life. So we're just going to press these out. You know what? Let's get some of that chia pudding started, shall we? Where is my chia seeds? Nope. Yep. Let's get some of that chia pudding started so that by the time we're done pressing these out, it will be ready to munch. Munch away, baby. So I've got a bowl. I've got a quarter of a cup of black chia seeds packed with so many nutrients. So good for you. I'm going to go in with half a cup of, no, I'm going to go in with the full fat. Who cares? Who cares? I'm going in with the whole shebang, baby. Hi, Dot. How are you, honey? What do you need? What do you need? You just need some love? Is that it? Okay, so we're just going to stir this around. Now, I don't want to pull out a blender just to make some date paste. But you know what I got the other day? I got um, coconut sugar. Yeah. Coconut sugar is made from coconut sap, and it's got a low pH. It's very, um, it's got, it's, it's got a low acid. It's alkaline. Who knew? I'm going to try some. I'm going to try some. Let's try it and see. What are you doing, Dot? What, what are you doing? What's up? <laughs> Crazy child. Crazy cat child. Okay, so I've got some of this coconut sugar, and it actually has, like, lumps in it. That's actually kind of normal. I'm just going to sprinkle some in there. And it has not been processed in the same way. This is... Uh, coconut sap that has been dried and powdered as opposed to sugar, which is ex incredibly processed and incredibly carbonic acid forming in the body. So and the coconut milk has its own sweetness to it, you know? Oh, baby. This is going to be yummy. Hi, what are you doing, Dot? What you doing? This is now the Dot Cam. What are you doing, babe? Okay, so this is just going to set up by just sitting, and the the um, chia seeds are just going to start blooming. Mm. That tastes really yummy. So good. The Mexican grocery stores have the tortilla press. Yes, uh, yes. I got mine at an Italian store. Mm. Oh, that's good. I'm just going to put that over there to bloom while we finish our tortillas. Hi. Hi. Get this show on the road, baby. Get this show on the road.
get out a nice little presentation cup for my chia pudding. There we go. Cute, right? Dottie! Okay, so let's keep on marching forward with our with our dough for this plantain tortilla wraps. Let's see here. Can you see that? You just want to press it down gently. You don't want it to be too thin. Peel it back and just keep that cycle going. Yes. How are you guys doing out here? Linda asked those says those wraps look awesome. They really do, don't they? Still trying to find raw buckwheat groats. Guess to have to order on Amazon. Yeah. Gonna make those little cucumber scoopers with avocado tonight again. Oh my God, they're so satisfying. Uh, Cindy, hey Cindy. Cindy wanted to know when you juice the pineapple, you just cut it up to small to avoid the foam. Yeah, I just cubed it up into like little cubes like this and that really helped. So who knew, who knew? And it really, you guys saw it. It just completely avoided the extra foam and it avoided clunk, uh, getting the filter part of the juicer clogged up. I had no idea. There I was doing these big gigantic spears of pineapple, wondering why is this so not working? Yeah, that would be why. That would be why. Great idea. Just bought six cans of organic coconut milk the other day at Natural Groceries for $150. Is that coconut palm sugar? How about date sugar? Is it alkaline? Date sugar is also good. Date sugar is dehydrated dates that have just been powdered. So, yes, I have date sugar as well. I like it. I really, it's surprisingly, for surprisingly for me, I really don't use sugar as much as, oh my God, everything had sugar on it before. Everything. The old burns, you know? Man, we used to go through a lot of sugar. And now I hardly use any sweetener. If I do, it's going to be dates, which are dried fruit, which is on the absolutely okay list Daddy. Okay, I'm just going to keep on doing this until I'm finished with all I should really show you guys how I'm scooping that in the bowl here as well but I think you guys can kind of you know you get it you've, you've used an ice cream scoop before same kind of thing. Same kind of thing. Okay, let's see if we can get this last one. Ooh, this one is really thin, it seems. Yes, that worked really well. Okay, so let's pop these into the dehydrator. I just looked at coconut sugar earlier. That's funny. That is funny. It works with the Nama juicer too. I juiced apples today and use the pulp. Tastes better than applesauce you buy and raw. Yes. Yes. Okay, let me pop these in.
Okay, and just to show you, this is a little sneak preview. These are the this is the tortilla we just made earlier, and it's two. Um, it's going to end up being a cracker, which is not bad. It tastes really good. So this is going to go keep going in the dehydrator. See here, it's really. It's too dry. It doesn't have enough of that flexibility. Great as a cracker, though. You got some of this with some hummus. I had some hummus out here. Sometimes when we're out on the road, we'll stop in and get some pre-made hummus because it's better than what else are you going to eat on the road? So let's try a little of this hummus with this little almost finished cracker. This one is a garlic, a roasted garlic hummus. So let's put some of that on there. And there you go. You have a cracker that you can enjoy that you know what you made. Mm-hmm. Little, little flatbread. It totally works. Mm. It's a nice, delicate texture. And it's only been in the dehydrator for an hour. So the longer it goes, the more crispy it's going to get. So, yeah, remember I was saying, hmm, I don't know if this is going to have the um, flexibility that we need for a wrap. And it doesn't. But that's okay because now we made some crackers. Ta-da! Ta-da! There you have it. I am finally home taking a minute. Then I'm going to start cutting up these pineapples. 12 pineapples and eight four-pound bags of oranges. That is so awesome, Alana. Who are you? Who is this new girl? I love her. Mm. I am not unhappy about this bread whatsoever. Mm. Mm. It's a little delicate, but that's okay. Look at that. I think in future, I would chop up finely some green onions and press that into it on its way into the dehydrator. Maybe we'll do that with some of these plantain chips because then it'll give it some nice texture and color, you know? Mm-hmm. I really like that. That is yummy. There you go. The buckwheat wraps turned into buckwheat crackers. They're not crunchy yet because they haven't been in long enough, but they will be. Mm. That is really good. No funky taste, no bitterness whatsoever, which you know is my pet peeve. I hate bitterness. Mm. So good. Okay, let's finish making these plantain ones. So I'm going to take a scoop, put it on my tortilla press, and just... Press and go, baby. Just press it down and go. Look at that. Easy, perfect size. I don't have to do a whole bunch of spreading it out with my flat, my, my, my offset spatula and all of that. This is just so much easier if I could just keep it on the tray, however. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, so I'm pretty sure that these plantain ones will be flexible just because of the fact that it's got so much banana. And I think it's that pectin in the fruit, you know, that keeps it, gives it that flexible nature. Awesome, Roxanne. Oh my God, I'm so happy to hear that. Nice, gonna try this. Try it, you might like it, right? You don't, you never know until you try. You gotta try it. So here's how I just scoop out, sorry, I've been doing this off camera, this part. I just go in and I just scoop and I wipe it on the side of the bowl like so to get my, my measurement out. But I need to, I'm out of trays. I think this is my second to last tray. So I'm like, hmm, let's make one twice as thick because <laughs> I'm... I want to be done with this job. How will it be if it's twice as, get it all the way to all the edges there. Do it a little bit thicker. You know what I'm saying? Turn it around. There we go. There we go. Let's see. Can we do it? Yes, we can. This one is a little bit messed up there. It's okay. It'll still taste great. It will. Yes, it will. Yeah, so when you're cooking like this, when you're uncooking, when you're preparing new food for your new lifestyle, you got to give you got to give yourself some time to experiment. You got to you got to remember that not everything is always going to turn out just like with regular cooking, right? When you started learning how to cook regular cooking with with heat. Did you know exactly what you were doing all the time? Did everything turn out perfectly the first time you made it? No. Sometimes you were like, "Oh, that's a hot mess." What happened there? Don't know, but that's not that's not working for me. Next, you give it another try and you go again. You know what I'm saying? Same thing when you're doing this raw vegan type of cooking. You got to give it a try. You got to see what works, see what doesn't work, experiment. You'll figure it out. We all do. We get to figure it out together. Awesome absolutely awesome. You get to be inspired by me. I get to be inspired by you and your brilliant ideas. And together we all learn together. I'm just going to turn this around to get the other side pressed down a little bit. I hope. Yeah, maybe. This is going to be another big one. Got any pastels? No. Oh, no! Oh, there's so many things to juice, though. That's going to be beautiful. Oh, crap. I got that down totally wrong. <laughs> Did you guys see that? I'm really good for you, I'm guessing. Yeah. If you want to juice, you can juice any of the fruits in there for yourself. Yes, we have bananas. Okay, that one's a little bit of a disaster, but that's okay. I still needed to pull out my last sheet. Damn it, I should have just have. You know what I'm going to do? Um, I'm going to get that off of there because I don't like that. I don't like that. Let's clean off that edge a little bit. I'm going to do it right. Perfectionist, a little bit. 
but when you know how to do something right and you just mess it up so badly, it's hard for me to look past that, you know? Yes, I know it's going to still taste great, whatever, blah, blah, blah. It needs to look right. It needs to look great. It doesn't just need to taste great. It needs to look great too. At least when I do something, I don't know. <clears throat> it's important to me, you know? Okay, so let's do it again. Let's do it again, baby. Just do it again. One scoop, not a double scoop. Just one scoop at a time. Stick with what works. Stick with what you know is going to work. Yeah, but these wraps are so good for any number of fillings. You can use beautiful chopped veggies. You can have hummus in there. You can have nice shredded uh, lettuce. Oh my gosh, the possibilities are endless. You can have some of the Bernsey burger. You know what I mean? You can have some of the pastel meat mixture, raw vegan ground beef mixture that we make here. If you haven't seen that video, check that out from Earlier this week, we did some Bernsey Burger pastel style. Kaya just came down asking, any more pastels? I'm like, yeah, no. <laughs> and I could probably whip some up too, but I'm not going to because I'm done. I am done in terms of food prep. Maybe later. There we go. There we go. Easy to fix. Easy to fix. I can't find pimento peppers in my area. Would I use red peppers then for the green seasoning? Yeah, you can use red peppers for sure. It's not going to have the same kind of taste, that authentic taste, but green pe red peppers are fine. Um, I've at times when I'm, I've been desperate, man, I have looked for the pimento peppers at my local West Indian grocery stores or the Asian market. And they don't have it because, you know, with this whole 2020 thing, uh, flights to and from Trinidad were very limited. Um, shipments of produce was almost non-existent from Trinidad. Now that things have cleared up a little bit, I don't know if you have any tr uh, West Indian type stores where you are, markets or, or Chinese or Oriental markets. They sometimes have it. Kathy, remind me, where do you live again? I forget. And, and even some of the West Indian stores just don't ever carry them as well. So it's a hit and miss, you know? So here is the other tray. I'm going to pop these in. Okay, and I wanted to show you guys what these look like. So this is the first batch that we put in there, and I'm just going to lift them up and just gently turn them over. But you can see here along this edge here how it's going to get really crispy. I keep on biting my inner lip right here. Oh, my gosh. Anyhow. This is going to be more like chips than wraps, but that's okay because it tastes really good, really, really good. So I'm going to pop these back in. You don't have to flip them over, but I just wanted to show you that they are flip overable, flippable. We're going to put that back in. Mm. My lip. Uh, 
Come here. Shut up. Come here. I know you don't have any food. Oh my god, you cats eat so much. Mm -hmm. Actually, I have two trays left, but all ten. This is the the ninth tray going into my dehydrator, which is why I needed to have a ten tray dehydrator because you know when I'm really on a roll and really making a lot of food, getting it ready for my family. I need a lot of trays in my dehydrator to be going, you know. Wisconsin. Okay. My local grocery store is trying to order them for me. Oh, that is so sweet. She said she, she will keep ordering them, but they haven't sent any. I checked the Asian market and the Mexican market. They didn't have any. Yeah, they're very hard to find. Gosh. Oh, my gosh. Hopefully you'll be able to find them. And they're different to quote unquote pimentos that you can order in the jar. Cause I've ordered some of those. It's a different flavor. It's a different flavor. Pimentos in general is just the word for peppers. Uh, and in Trinidad, we just call them pimentos because that's just what we call them. They're, they're pimento seasoning peppers, but pimentos is just a generic word for peppers in general, red peppers. But do what you can. If you can only find, uh, you know, the red peppers, just use red peppers. So I'm just getting the final plantain tortillas down here. And this might be the last one. So I'm just going to scoop this out. And then later on in our evening check-in class tonight, I will show you guys how these came out and in my stories. So if you're on Instagram and Facebook, make sure to be checking out the stories because I put them all there for you. I have two more. I have space for two more. Or rather, I have batter for two more, and I have space on here for two more. These will be slightly smaller ones. So that's, that's going to work out. And I don't know where Dally went. Maybe he went to pick up his truck. Oh, my God, he's getting his truck back. It's going to be like Christmas in here. We're getting a huge snowstorm, too. Oh, my God, we're going to have a white Christmas. You guys, we're going to have a white Christmas. I'm dreaming. Yes, I cannot wait. Christmas time. Christmas time. Love it. Love it. Let me get off all that excess. So remember, you can make any kind of wrap out of any kind of vegetable. Uh, this is the kind of consistency that you want to go for. This kind of wet dough as opposed to a super runny, super liquidy mixture, which I have in the beginning, that's... I have failed forwards a lot on the wrap situation. I fell forwards right here with you guys on the wraps, right? Just know that that's how it goes sometimes. Listen, when you see other content creators out there making the wraps, you don't see the countless <laughs> recipes that fail. You just don't, you know? Here on The Real Juicy Detox, you see it all, baby. You see it all. You see it all. Okay, my local supermarket is awesome. I asked for something and they do uh, try to get it for me. I'm so thankful for them. That is amazing. Amazing. Yes, Dottie.
Okay, so that bowl is filling up. The rest of the stuff on the counter, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's not too crazy over here. Just a few things to put away. I'm going to rinse this off. back in its spot right here. Let me pop this in. And I wonder if we can get another one out of the, oh, my phone needs to be plugged in. I'll be right back. You want food, Dottie? Give these kitties a little bit of their food. And then we're going to try the chia pudding. Mm. And it's funny because now that I've had, <laughs> now that I had that uh, hummus on that flatbread, I'm not hungry. So I'm not going to. Not going to eat too much, but I will taste it. Yes, Dot, I'm coming. Mm. Mm -hmm. Come here, baby. What is up? Mm -hmm. What's up? She's like, feed me, damn it. Feed me, that's what's up. Okay, okay. There it is. Kitty. Come here, kitty. I'm just going to put all that out for you because I'm tired of feeding you every hour or two hours. There. Okay, let me just adjust my light here for one quick second. And turn down this one. Ah, <sighs> there we go. There we go. Okay, so what I've got here now is some of this beautiful um, chia pudding. Thank you so much for the reminder that we should try some chia pudding. Uh, let's see here. There we go. Okay, so this is just coconut milk and chia seeds so one cup of coconut milk a quarter cup of chia and we can make a little layered situation damn it <laughs> there's water in that cup and i don't want Ugh. burns Okay, let's wipe it down properly, shall we? Let's wipe it down properly. Yes. Okay, here we go. And yeah, you can put some sliced bananas in here. You can put, I've got some kiwi. Ooh, kiwi would be great in this. which means a little bit more work than I was going to do right now, but I'm going to do it anyhow for the sake of the pudding. Push that back a little bit. 
I do like how nice and clean this kitchen is considering that we've made a whole dehydrator full of food. I should do a whole a whole cooking uncooking show one day where I don't say a word. It would just be a silent cooking show. Would you guys be down for that? No talking, just quiet, peaceful in my zone cooking, uncooking. I know you guys like the, the conversation. It keeps you company, which I love, by the way. Ooh, mango. Mango. Mango and banana and kiwi. I have mango as well, you guys. You know, I love me some mango. Maybe I'm going to leave that for just eating later on. Look at that. Look at that beautiful mango. Pretty. Pretty. Okay, so I need a chopping mat. Okay, so I'm just going to peel and slice up some kiwi fruit. How are you doing? You good? I'm still here. Are you still with me? Are you still here? Are you relaxing? What are you up to? What you doing, babe? You look cute. Thanks. Come say hello to people. Hello. Look at this beautiful girl. I love that you're repping the Trini colors. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. My Trini flag. Your Trini flag. You're repping the Trini colors too. Come on over here. Come say hello to class. You're going to be extremely out of frame. Oh, yeah. No, I like that. That's good too. There we go. Well, just What's up? We're all matching. What the heck? Look at that. Was that planned? Well, this was planned, but I don't know if that was planned. <laughs> I like the Christmas pants too. It's the Christmas pants are cute, right? Yeah. The winter, the winter pants. Bye. Bye. Have, Have, fun. Fun. Have fun. Okay. I think that's the new boy. Okay. I don't know. I'm, I shouldn't. I shouldn't say that. I don't know. I don't know. I'm on a need to know basis. Haven't been told anything, but their matching outfit was planned. Okay. Interesting. He's a cutie. He's a cutie. Sebastian. Sebastian. When I do this as well, I try to push the fruit up onto the side of the bowl of the container, like so. I'm gonna put another layer of that. Oh, okay. 
Huh? Pretty freaking sweet, bro. What? Kaya. I was like, is that the new boy? And then I don't know what she said. Pretty friggin' sweet. I was like, okay, what does that mean? What does that mean? Okay, so. Ooh, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think it's the new boy. Yeah, Sebastian has been here a while, a few times with, uh, I don't know. Um, but yeah, one of the, one of our, one of the kids' friends. One of Kaya's friends. Sebastian. Oh, yes. Look at that. That looks so pretty. That looks so pretty. What do you say? Should we do some chopped bananas on that now? Yes. These kiwis are really yummy. Mm hmm. Mm. Oh my God. Sharon, I can't wait to see your recipe for those. Yesterday, when I was getting dressed for class, I was like, ooh, gingerbread pants. I should be making gingerbread cookies. Legit. That's what I was thinking. What is your recipe? What do you got going on there, girl? Let us know what is your what is your secret recipe? So you know, you can make these little desserts up for your holiday dessert table. I mean, this is a lot in here. This is a lot of food up in here. But yeah, let me know what your gingerbread cookie recipe is. And thank you for all of your, all of you, for all of your shares of all of your recipes in the Real Juicy Detox group. You guys are absolutely incredible. Your contribution is just, you guys are what's making that group, man. It's like, I'm just constantly blown away by everything that you guys are sharing and the beautiful recipes that you're putting together and so cool. And there you have it. Doesn't that look great? I don't want to put any banana on top. I don't want it to get too brown, you know? But we can do a couple slices, sure. Like I said, I'm really not hungry right now, so I might just put this in the fridge for later when I am, or just maybe See if Dolly wants it. There you go. Some more kiwi on there. Remember, you eat with your eyes first.
That's enough. Mm. Coconut chia pudding with kiwi and banana. That looks yummy. That looks so good. Doesn't it? Let's have a taste, shall we? Let's have a little taste. I don't want to ruin it though. Let's have a little taste with in my chef's bowl over here. Get that in there. Pop that like so. Chop up a few more of the leftover bananas. And just pop that in the bowl. Get the rest of the kiwi. <gasps> Is that the truck I hear outside? I think I heard Dolly's truck. Okay, let me go and see. Yes, it is. Guess who got his truck back? Oh, baby. He's so excited. He's going to come in here. I got my truck back. Watch the look on his face. Maybe. He's coming in. I heard it in the driveway. What's that I heard in the driveway pull oh, up? I heard it. I was like, oh man. And he was, he gave it a little zoom, zoom. Yeah, he, he gave it a little gas. Are you excited? Yeah. Are you yeah. happy? Yeah. It's let me see your, good. let me look in that camera right there. Look in that camera right there. Bend down and look good, in man. that camera. No. No, look <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really good. Oh my gosh. You want to go for a drive? I need to go to Kitchener to the Chinese market. I uh, will. But uh, I'm just testing it now. I'm gonna go back and then uh, later. Okay. So I'll say about an hour, maybe. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. We can. Uh, oh, we can do that. We can. We can go for a long drive in the oh, country we can somewhere. Throw drop of uh, work truck. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna trust me driving your baby? I don't know. I don't know. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let you drive it. We'll, we'll come back. <laughs> Fuck that shit! I want to drive your truck. I love driving your big truck. I love driving a truck with lots of power. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. This was amazing. This was so delicious. Look at this, you guys. Beautiful coconut pudding. He looks like a little kid. Yeah. Grinning ear to ear. It's a diesel truck. It's a 250. And it sounds like a diesel truck in the driveway. I heard it. Ask them. I heard it. I was like, oh, I think I just heard Dolly's truck in the driveway. Let me go check. And I was like, yep. 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 Definitely. He looks like a little kid. I know. He's been so wanting this yeah, it's been truck a back. And it's Christmas Eve. Babe. I know. We got oh, it for my Christmas. So, you know. It was a Friday, it's a Christmas, so I'm getting that uh, lottery, that million dollars. So there you go. Christmas awesome. And million dollar. Christmas and a million dollar lottery. Well, yeah. you have everything you want I right now. Your heart is full. You're happy. You're beaming. Amazing beams of light out of every pore of your being. Yeah. I love seeing you so happy. Right. Really, really awesome. Yeah. Yeah. All right, you go for a drive. <laughs> ear to ear grin. So cute. Yeah, you can hear it. I know I can. I said I said so. He's like, yeah, you can hear it. I'm like, I know, babe. I know. Mm. It's 
So we will go and drive his truck back to the shop, his company truck. And he will drive that truck because I don't have permission to drive that truck. And then um, I'm so excited for him. Thank you so much, Alana. That's so sweet. And then, uh, so I'll drive his truck back. It's it's a really beautiful truck to drive. Oh my God, I love, love driving his truck. And um, for now though, I am just going to let you guys know that this chia pudding situation is so delicious. So, so good. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, my battery died on my other, on my food cam. Thank you, Kelly. That's exciting. Poppy for him. Thank you, babe. We were, um, those of you who don't know this story, unless you were following me back in the summer. Wow, this is so good. That kiwi fruit in here, so bright, so delicious. Last summer, we went camping. We were doing a lot of crown land camping, which is basically camping in the wilderness parts of Ontario that are owned by the, the crown, crown land, and that are accessible by sometimes all kinds of crazy terrain. But we were on our way to another um, crown land camping trip we were three and a half hours away from home and the truck broke down. Yes, pulling Glenda. White smoke coming out of the tailpipe of a diesel truck is not a good, a good sign. And for the longest time, he took it to the mechanic. Mechanic has been busy. He had been since, we thought that the engine was blown, which would have been like a ten or $15,000 job, which is like, May as well buy another truck, right? At that price. Used, of course, but anyhow, his the mechanic who we have, who is absolutely amazing, hadn't didn't have time to get around to it. This guy has like the most amazing business, this mechanic, but he couldn't get into um he couldn't get the truck up on the hoist until maybe a couple weeks ago, put it up on the hoist. Turns out it was not the engine that was blown. It was some other part that the previous owner had put in there as part of the coolant system, which failed and which put coolant into the engine. Yeah. Where it should not have been. As it turns out, we had stopped and pulled over at a Circle K gas station which is like a, a chain gas station that has a big convenience store and a big parking lot and a well lit. And that's where we had to, that's where we camped out for um, 24 hours until we can get it sorted out. So we can get CAA to come and tow the truck and the camper away. It was crazy. It was absolutely crazy. So, um, or did we just get, what did we get? I can't remember how it worked out. Anyhow, as it turns out, we thought that the truck was gonzo and the mechanic a couple of weeks ago said, actually, I can fix it. I figured out what it is and we can fix it. And Christmas Eve, the day before Christmas Eve right now, and he just got his truck back. So he has been really bummed that his truck hasn't been, has been out of commission. And, um, but now he has it back. So he's really excited. I've only had chia seed once. What does it taste like? I bought a big bag. I'm not sure why, but, but I did. It's almost doesn't have a taste. It's almost a texture. It's like tapioca. So it's like these little pearls. Oh, my other camera died. So um, it's got these like little black pearls. It's almost mm, takes on the flavor of whatever liquid you're reconstituting it into. So it doesn't really have a a flavor. It's more of a texture. It's more of a texture. And I love what it does to my bowels. It scrubs out my bowels really good. I know some people have had it and they said, oh, I don't like it. It makes me constipated. I'm like, really? Not me. So give it a try, Kelly. Put it in some uh, coconut milk. You want to do like a quarter of a cup of, of chia seeds to one cup of 
coconut milk, and that gives a nice creamy texture. Some people do a quarter of a cup to three quarters of a cup of liquid. I don't like that. I like the full one cup of liquid. And then you have this beautiful, delicious, really, really tasty pudding that you can have. I'm just going to put some saran wrap over the top of that. I hope you guys had fun today. I hope I kept you company. I hope I entertained you. I hope I added some value to your life. And I hope that you come back for more on another day. I know it's been a more, more of a quiet day in class. It's also a busy time right now. People are, you know, busy with their families. I am going to be coming live and live streaming on Christmas Day as well, as well as tomorrow, Christmas Eve. So I hope that you guys come back for that. I know, um, I don't know what, what we're going to be expecting in terms of who shows up and what we're going to be talking about. But, uh, you know, I thought we would hang out. Anyhow, maybe we'll do another, let me know. You guys let me know in the group. What would you like me to do? Would you like me to make something on Christmas Day? Would you like me to talk about, would you like me to do a, another masterclass run through of some of the stuff we've talked about? Let me know in our, um, on our community page on Facebook, what you want, what you would like us to do on Christmas day. Happy to do that. Maybe I'll take you guys for a drive on Christmas day. Yes. It's going to be a white Christmas. You guys, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be a big storm. You'll be here. Oh my God. That is, I'm honored. I'm truly honored, truly, truly honored. So yeah, let's hang out. We'll hang out for Christmas day. We'll chill out. My family will be here. Your family will be there. Maybe, um, Danica's coming. She's coming tomorrow night. So Danica will be here from Montreal. My, my 24 year old Kaya will be here. Uh, Brookie will be here. Uh, and Erica might be here. Maybe we'll have some of the kids come by, uh, but it's going to be fun. We got to start wrapping presents. Oh my God, Dally, we got to start wrapping presents, babe. Anyhow, I will be here on Christmas day with all of you and I cannot wait. And I want to let you know that I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for being here with me and um, many blessings to you wherever you are. And I love you guys so much.